Chapter Fifteen of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Fifteen, in which Claude amuses himself with a bull. Mrs. Lightfoot, in the interview touched upon in the last chapter, had been anxious to learn into what kind of company her little boy would be thrown. Oh, Frank had said, they are a good set. Winter is a little gentleman, and he's a weakly communicant. He's a good fellow, even if he is a little frisky now and then, but most boys that I know are that way, too. <laughs> Dockery and Pearson are full of fun and life, especially Dockery, but they are both as good as any small boys I know of. Then there's Willie Hardy. Um, Frank smiled and blushed. What about Willie? asked Mrs. Lightfoot. I didn't want him along but his mother begged me to take him she's a widow and i believe a very pious woman she just dotes on willie who's her only child i guess she has spoiled him he's too young to be bad but he is an infernal <clears throat> that is he gets a freak occasionally and won't tell the truth under any circumstances lying is un-american observed mr lightfoot he never said anything truer lying is un-american the writer of this story when he thinks of the true american boy always thinks of one whose foremost trait is downright honesty during the whole of this conference it may be remarked mr lightfoot's hobby appeared at its best outing is american and so too is baseball has willie hardy much influence over his companions pursued mrs lightfoot influence cried frank they hardly show him the common signs of respect willie has been trying hard to tell the truth this month i threatened not to take him if he didn't stop lying now he generally stops to think before he answers whenever he does this i know he's telling the truth but whenever he answers without hesitation i begin to doubt you see the boy labors in telling the truth and lies without effort convinced that willie could have no evil influence over claude mrs lightfoot turned to other points and ended as we saw in the last chapter by deciding that her son might join the camping party the outing began most favorably frank elmwood had seen to every detail and to their simple comfort nothing was wanting much of the work fell upon john winter and frank the smaller members of the party devoting themselves almost exclusively for the first three days to swimming and to rambles in the woods claude returned each day with his knee breeches in a condition that called for repairing and the services of a neighbor had to be invoked to keep this indefatigable climber of trees in patches luckily he had brought four pairs of knickerbockers and frank was thinking seriously of sending for four more their camp stood a little back of an arm of lake vesper or rather of a separate lake for it was connected with the larger body of water by a narrow channel some few minutes walk to the west of them was situated the villa belonging to mr collins which commanded a view of the greater water beyond mr collins lawn lay a great open field which answered every requirement for baseball purposes and as its margin gave an excellent place for bathing this field was a favorite rendezvous of the boys it was here that claude took his lesson in swimming i say lesson for one was enough under frank's direction he caught the trick of balancing himself in the water and he required no further assistance far from claude's needing encouragement frank was obliged to keep a close eye on him as the youngster persisted in going out of his depth and paddled about as though the waters were his natural home in the water as on shore claude had a certain instinct for anything that called for play and flexibility of muscle and his quickness in learning astonished all how frank contrived to attend to the camp and keep track of claude is a mystery but he was unfailing in his vigilance his only resting time came when claude was engaged at baseball or in bed then he knew that the young scapegrace was safe 
one morning after their usual swim john and frank taking it for granted that the little boys would as usual knock up till dinner-time departed for the camp to prepare dinner archer who was staying at a farmhouse walter collins dockery pearson and claude took the field while rob collins batted them high flies an unlucky hit of rob's sent the ball into a bit of marshy land near the lake and despite their search they could discover no trace of it just as they were abandoning the quest rob's mother sent word that he was needed at the house and thus it came about that the six small boys were left to their own resources did any of you see the bull up in livingstone's pasture asked archer is he a big fellow cried claude he's a beauty come on he's worth seeing i've got a red handkerchief said claude and maybe we'll have a little fun you'd better look out said walter collins who was a quiet calm prudent little fellow he never ran blindly into danger but in it he was as courageous as claude come along collins cried archer as the crowd started off at a trot up the slope leading inland no i'll not now if there was one of these small boys who understood claude it was young collins and understanding him as he did he feared that claude would put himself in danger in order to have fun with the bull so after a moment's thought he set off at a smart run for the camp i say frank he shouted breathlessly as he came within cry the fellows have all gone up to take a look at livingstone's bull and claude's got a red handkerchief and says he's going to have some fun dashing a partially peeled potato to the ground frank arose and without waiting to pull off a sort of apron that protected his trousers he set off bareheaded and at full speed in the direction of livingstone's field followed at an ever-increasing distance by walter collins at length arriving breathless at the top of a hill which commanded a good view frank saw a sight which filled him with dismay nearly a quarter of a mile to the west lay a pasture land of twelve or thirteen acres enclosed by a stout strong fence some five feet six inches high at the end of the field nearest him and just outside the fence stood a group of boys apparently in a state of uncontrollable delight inside the fence stood claude hopping and dancing as he flaunted a gay red rag in the breeze and rushing down from the further end of the pasture came livingstone's bull frank stood fixed in horror nearer and nearer drew the furious beast lashing his tail and pawing up the ground while the young scapegrace danced and hopped as though the animal bearing down upon him were a spring lamb oh collins what shall i do shouted frank still staring at the spectacle the bull came straight on and was within five yards of claude when the lad suddenly vaulted over the fence and forthwith doubled up apparently with laughter at the wide-eyed stupid discomfiture of his pursuer thank god he's safe exclaimed frank heartily but if the little rat had missed his hold in vaulting he might have been gored to death hello what are they up to now for the boys led by claude were hurrying toward the other end of the field in such a manner as not to attract the attention of his enraged majesty why frank cried walter i do believe he's going to try it over again with an impatient exclamation frank broke into a run determined if possible to put an end to this foolhardy bull baiting but before he had left the hill behind him the merry-maker below had again jumped into the arena hi hi he shouted waving the rag and dancing in glee hi hi come on here with your old bull head the beast turned angrily and awaiting no further invitation gave a bellow and came raging down the field frank found himself racing against the bull and with very slender prospects of success as the bull got quite near and frank came within hailing distance he could contain himself no longer claude claude he cried in agony 
this step was unfortunate claude heard his name called when the furious beast was nearly upon him and looked in the direction whence the call proceeded look out claude look out came a chorus of frightened voices from his companions claude turned to see the bull within a few feet of him quick as a flash he put his hand upon the top railing of the fence but before he could clear it the head of the bull was beneath his feet and claude went high high into the air propelled by that strong head and came down flat on his face but most fortunately on the safe side of the fence he rose to greet the palest faces he had ever seen but he dispelled their fear by breaking into a shout of laughter ha <laughs> ha oh didn't i fool him he exclaimed it was rich young man said frank hardly able to control himself do you know that you were within an inch of losing your life an inch is as good as a mile retorted claude lightly and then he became very much astonished when he saw how grave frank had become if there were an asylum for fools bawled frank indignantly to the whole party i'd have you all admitted at once we didn't want claude to go into that field said dockery but willie hardy stumped him to do it and then we couldn't keep him back could we archer sure answered archer and then when he did get in and began dancing around we were pretty nervous the first time but after that for goodness sake broke in frank how many times did he jump into that field the last was the fourth time answered archer he hopped over the fence so lightly and easily the first time the bull came to him that we thought there wouldn't be any danger but each time he tried it he let the bull get nearer and you saw what happened last time he tore my pants said claude ruefully it's my fourth pair confound your pants said frank claude as long as you're out here don't you go near that bull again i won't frank i wouldn't have gone in for all the stumps in the world if i had thought you wouldn't like it well i'm blessed exclaimed frank so you thought i'd have enjoyed it if i'd been here i suppose well it was great fun answered claude which shows how little sense of personal danger claude had it was such occurrences as this that gave his older friends so much anxiety the boy was honest and willing to do what was proper but his appreciation of danger was so little that he could scarcely be trusted out of sight willie hardy continued frank if you do any more stumping in regard to claude i'll send you home i didn't think he was such a fool said the pretty boy frank rewarded this answer with a withering glance but willie quite satisfied with his explanation was already preparing to astound the folks at home with a thrilling account of a bullfight in which he himself was to figure as the hero as the party somewhat crestfallen made for the camp gentle willie ran on ahead and startled the ladies at the collins villa with the announcement that claude had been nearly gored to death by a bull the boy had a passion for lying claude walked for good reasons in the rear of the procession and after a process of hard thinking still failed to see why frank elmwood was so angry End of chapter fifteen